I'm just saying, or like Long Island. North Jersey, dude. So, Kazi, you know, like, yeah, or North Jersey. So, you know, like, Billy Joel is Jewish. Yeah, I know that. But he pretends to be Italian. I didn't know that, actually. I know, I didn't either. Seems from an <laughs> Italian restaurant. A bottle of red. A bottle of white. But is he actually claiming, Jews drink wine? Is he like, claiming to not... be Italian? Or is he just attending an Italian... He never. He's claimed- basically Rachel DeLazzo. Um, <laughs> 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 That's a good poco for this episode. <laughs> Rachel DeLazzo of Italians. <laughs> He's talked about it at length, but it'd be funny to like run up on him with like a microphone. <laughs> you could do that as a time crisis oh. correspondent and just be like, Mr. Joe, we have evidence suggesting that you're not Italian at all, but Jewish. And you'd be like, yeah, you, you know, uh, yeah, I uh, grew up with a lot of Italian kids, you know, Mr. Joe. You are no Italian. Yeah, yeah, you know. I, but now think about all his hit, <laughs> think about all his hit songs. There's scenes from an Italian restaurant. Right. Where I think his answer is that I grew up with a lot of Italian people. I would go with their families to mass and whatever, and I just kind of working class Long Island vibes. Yeah, I, I just identified with it. And then think about like um, only the good die young. Yeah, Jewish people don't want to die young. <laughs> That's for the Italian. <laughs> <laughs> but that whole song is addressed to a Catholic schoolgirl. I did not realize that. Oh, you Catholic girls. Doesn't that what he says? I think you're right. Steinfeld, pull up the lyrics and just read the, the and opening stanza. Come out, Virginia. Don't let them wait. You Catholic girls start much too late. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well, yeah, remember? Ooh. What are these? Wait, what are again. Spicy. Obviously, that song could be from the point of view of a Jewish person. Because later he goes, you didn't count on me when you were counting on your rosary. (laughs) Oh, 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 Right. So he's pleading with her. Yeah. Come out, have a good time with me. And he's saying, honestly. Maybe I'm Jewish, maybe I'm Italian. No, Jews don't have a good time. (laughs) Yeah. He identified as Italian. What about moving out Anthony's song? Oh, yeah, exactly. Very Italian. Bump, 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 bump. Great song. Amazing. Probably my favorite, Joel. It's so good. I was listening to that recently. Do you know all these songs, Cassie? Are you a Joel head? I'm not. I honestly can't even tell the difference between him and Elton John. It's been a problem. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Thin ice. Sorry. Whose song is um The Ballerina in the Hand? What? The Ballerina in the Hand. <laughs> I think that's like Elton a Paula Cole song. Tiny Dancer. That's Tiny Dancer. Oh. oh, oh. Yeah, that's Elton that's John. That's the dumbest song oh. in history. <laughs> Yikes. Coming out swinging. How so? Name one lyric that makes sense in that song. Blue jean baby, LA lady, seamstress for the, the ba- band. What's well, about? It's what? About- <laughs> She's the seamstress for the band. It's She's about, wearing blue jeans. It's about groupies. Tiny dancer in my hand? That part I don't fully understand. We're all just pretending like that's fine? <laughs> Tiny dancer in my hand. So you don't like any surrealist lyrics? Because there's a lot of songs that don't quite add up. <laughs> the parts that make sense when you count the, head, count the headlights on the highway. Beautiful lyric. Because they're on a bus. That's a good lyric. Yeah. Okay, Tiny Dancer in My Hand. I'll give you that. But Thank you. you. Well, That's you all I want. Do you know this song? <laughs> yeah. I feel like we do this every time. <laughs> You're like, what, what, Billy Joel? No, just like, I don't know anything. And you guys were like, have you heard this? Let's do a close well, read you know, on this. Like, fine, the the yeah. truth is, Jake doesn't know any new music. Yeah, true. And maybe you don't know a lot of old music. Yeah. yeah, it's match made in heaven. And that's the thing. We're all, you're 25, <laughs> and you know I'm all, 35. you know all music. And Jake, it, how old are you now? 40? 48. Jake's 48. No, I'm not 48. <laughs> You're 25. I'm 35. Jake's 45. The funny thing is, yeah, I'm 42. We just have to, to get a 15 year old. I don't know why here. that was funny. <laughs> but in the six years from now, when we're doing time crisis, you'll be Jake, how old are you? I'll be, oh, I'm 54. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jake, how old are you again? How long do you guys think you'll do time crisis? For? Forever. Until one of us dies. And then maybe you get bumped up <laughs> <laughs> to co host. I would love a Billy Joel movie. Well, there's going to be a Billy Joel TV show. Oh, that's right. There's going to be a Billy Joel TV show? Yeah. Based on like the fictional universe of his songs. Is that right? Yeah. You didn't hear about this, Cassie? No. Which you is weird because I hear to... about most things. You don't pay attention to TV news? No, I really do. <laughs> that's why I'm shocked. <laughs> All right, Seinfeld, what's the story with the Billy Joel TV MGM show? MGM Television is teaming up with Universal Music Publishing Group as a scripted arcthology Oh, it's called Scenes from an Italian Restaurant. Nice. Oh, my God. Uh, the show takes its title from Joel's favorite song from his sizable catalog, 
Each episode will be based on lyrics of his hits, populated by characters from his songs, including The Stranger, The Piano Man, Mama Leone, even Sergeant O'Leary. Oh, really? Apparently. Is it animated? Doesn't seem I don't think like so. it. No. So it's like anthology, though, or like... It's an arcthology. Okay. Like an arcthology. Sergeant O'Leary is a crooked cop taking money from drug dealers. That's one of the darkest episodes. <laughs> but I wonder if the oh. characters will like commingle. That's a good if, question. If like the characters from Anthony's song will like meet well, the characters from um, Allentown, well, for instance. Is, that, is arcthol- Cassie, what does arcthology mean? It's a new word. Uh, <laughs> in the article, it's in quotes just to. Arcthology? So. Yeah. Are you familiar with this? Well, anthology is like basically it would be different every time, right? Like different casts. Right. So and so archaeology. this has an arc. Through it's, the different stories. Yeah, but then it's just not an anthology, right? Is it like the Romanoffs? And you guys watch that? I started it. Started it. Where every... Where'd you stop? <laughs> Ep3 or so. Oh, uh, yeah, I was saying Where it's, midway through. You both stopped. One. Loosely linked, but... Right, right. Well, first of all, I think I want to write an episode of this show. I'm going to reach out wow. and yeah, see what's be, happening. Wow, perfect. That'd be great. Because maybe I'll bring you guys in too, but... Where I've is been, this for? They're shopping it around, so it hasn't really landed anywhere yet. But oh, um, fingers crossed, you guys! Oh, come on, <laughs> uh, we're good. The one of the show creator or the creator of the show is Kevin Fox, who came from Law and Order SVU. So in terms of a oh, universe, I like it being dark and gritty. <laughs> it's gritty. It's gonna be some crime, some procedural elements to it. Sounds sick. He's got that tri-state experience too. When Mama Leone finds Anthony shot dead in the street <laughs> outside her apartment, she calls Sergeant O'Leary. But can she trust him? Turns out Sergeant O'Leary did it. <laughs> Can she get the body to the medical center fast enough? <laughs> she, Mr. Cagetori lives right across from it, but it wasn't soon enough. It'd be great if Billy Joel played himself, but they used like de-aging technology. On like him, the like, Irishman. Or, uh, yeah, or Gemini Man. Or Gemini Man. Dude, I would Billy love like... Billy Joel Gemini Man? Piano Man? For real though, like a sincere Billy Joel biopic with just him being like the angry young man. It's called Eight Mile. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying Eminem is the Billy Joel of rap? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you're... That's what I accidentally said. I love the idea of this. Like the main thread of the character is that he, he's, resent- he's very successful, but he's resentful of everyone else around him who's also successful. Mm-hmm. And he's not happy. Yeah. And like, yeah, you could have the scene of him reading the like Robert Criscow reviews. On stage. Yeah, he was oh, yeah he was very pissed about reviews. 19. Also like the idea... I- I saw a screening of The Irishman a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. How was it? Great film. I'm psyched. If you like Scorsese, it's like, yeah. you're going to love it. Super East Coast, a little more Philly-centric. Okay. But that movie being this big, sprawling epic with, you know, you got all the classic dudes, De Niro, Pacino, Keitel, everybody's Pesci, in Pesci, right? Pesci, yeah. And then you just see all these people who you're like, oh, that guy's from The Sopranos. You know, uh-huh. I think we could work all those guys into the Billy Joel movie. Oh, big time. Timothy Chalamet as a young Billy Joel. (laughs) (laughs) Too handsome. I don't know if people are going to buy it. That's the Hollywood version. That's the Marvel version. We're going Scorsese. (laughs) The two types of movies. Marvel versus Scorsese. I'm psyched for that movie. Okay. All I know is that I want to write a Billy Joel thing. If I can't get on the writing staff of the TV show, let's go pitch the biopic to Mr. Joel himself. You and me. They could use the Time Crisis brand to help launch it. If they want to call it Time Crisis Presents... Billy Joel the movie. We can discuss that. There can never be too many biopics on Billy Joel. <laughs> it's kind of becoming a crowded field. <laughs> <laughs> Competing projects. Look, the TV show, that's a puff piece. We're showing you the real Joel. It's called the real Joel. No, it's just called Joel. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Joel, <laughs> Blood and Passion. Like Joker? Or something. Yeah, it's, kind, it's kind of Joker-esque. There will Gritty be. New York 70s. I still haven't seen it's Joker. It's the Joker meets uh, Billy Joel biopic. J- the Joker. Joker. <laughs> the Joker. <laughs> Billy's like kind of toughing it out in his prog rock band Attila. <laughs> which yes. Is, yeah, is in like the early 70s, and he's just like kind of getting no respect and he's just like, what the f***? And he turns into Billy Joel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, he, what does he say? Like, when you introduce me, could you introduce me as Billy Joel? <laughs> <laughs> Is that his birth name, Seinfeld? Now, 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 let's get a number crunch. Brought to you by Seinfeld 2000. He's William Martin Joel, so yeah, he is Billy Joel. But his family probably changed it from Joel to dig a little deeper. 
What, what, what was Joel? <laughs> Seinfeld, enhance. Oh my God. Enhance. <laughs> I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> Joel's father was born in Germany, in Nuremberg, Germany. Howard Joel, born Helmut Joel. His father had created this highly successful mail order textile business. Joel mocked fabric. Okay, so even in Germany, they were Joel. A long See? line of Joels. Okay. So sad. Joel mocked fabric to escape the Nazi regime. Helmut's Whoa. family emigrated to Switzerland. Dude, this is all part of the Joel yeah. biopic. His father was forced to sell the business at a fraction this of its crazy. value in order to emigrate. The family reached the United States via Cuba. What? Because immigration quotas for German Jews prevented direct immigration at the time. In the United States, Helmut slash Howard Joel became an engineer but always loved music. Okay, actually, I'm going to okay, pitch Okay, the this. first like 45 minutes of the movie is like leaving Germany, going to Switzerland, then to Cuba. The whole movie should just be before well, Joel was born. Say, it's like a four-hour epic. Well, we I think we could, well, we could pitch them. Maybe we could actually make it part of the MCU. Who's to say that Billy Joel doesn't exist in the MCU? So maybe if we pitch them on a whole series of films, it's like... We start off with the grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> We're like... <laughs> <laughs> We're like <laughs> At the fabric store. <laughs> the first movie's four hours, and it ends with Billy Joel being born. <laughs> it opens with the rise of the Nazis. Yeah. You know what this movie series sounds like? It sounds Joel like a, fabric. It sounds like a real arcthology to be. Yeah. Kind of. The film version. The first film is called Joel Mock's Fabric, and it's about his father's textile business. The first movie is kind of an inglorious bastards, you know, World yeah. War II film. Then the second film is kind of like Billy Joel up through Attila, his prog rock band. Right. It's very like, it's like in, like the, in the last, 60s. It's the like last in my scene is the Italian restaurant. Where you, you just zoom out. The actual Italian restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe in this, his Joker moment is that he just starts dancing on the, the red and white checkered tablecloth at the Italian <laughs> restaurant. I have still haven't seen it, but I know that that, that scene, the music is down, 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 down. Hey. Oh, the Gary Glitter. I almost saw. Bow, bow. I almost saw Joker in Guadalajara, where it's called Guasan. <laughs> it's so good. Wow. I actually looked at movie times and I just ended up just solo. I was gonna go solo, but then I just like we had the show that night and I was like, oh, I'll just rest at the hotel. I want to see Joker. I'm curious about it. Did you see those stairs that he dances on are now like a tourist attraction in the Bronx? But they're in a really rough part of the Bronx. And uh, you know who was born in the Bronx? Billy Joel. <laughs> When he was one year old, his family moved to the Long Island suburb of Hicksville, New York. Okay, so maybe it's four movies. There's the kind of Holocaust World War II movie. Survival story. Magneto was in the Holocaust too, if you recall. I do mm. recall. So maybe, awesome. Maybe we work Magneto in there somehow. Then second movie is kind of Billy Joel's childhood. Kind of like Tree of Life vibe. Yeah. Third movie. <laughs> it's actually Marvel and Billy Joel's powers yeah. are <laughs> his pretending powers to music. be Italian. <laughs> Third movie is kind of like Billy Joel heyday. And then maybe four and five are broken up. That's uh, Infinity War and Endgame. <laughs> Billy, jo Billy Joel Endgame. The fifth should be the future of Billy Joel. It should be entirely <laughs> fictional. Him in like the year 2040. I like that. A bottle of white rum. You know, Cassie, I think I got a good role for you. Yeah? Rosalind Joel. Billy's mother. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Before they come to America. Rosalind was actually born in Brooklyn. Uh, this is, so couldn't you, be more perfect. Yeah, you have Brooklyn heritage. Her parents had emig immigrated from England. I don't think anyone would be upset by that. Yeah, you know, you were- the, de the deadline article comes out. There's <laughs> not going to be any backlash for that. <laughs> what, what, you think there'd be backlash to the deadline article that said, Cassie David said to play Rosalind <laughs> Joel in the first of the five Billy Joel movies. I think there would be like a lot of, like not a lot because no one cares, but there'd be, you know how like everyone can point to a time where like the world started to feel backwards? <laughs> like this would be one of those times. Wait, wait, can we get up some pictures of Rosalind Joel? Yeah, it's really right not here. that far off. How come every time there's a movie in the 40s in Brooklyn, they always wear the exact same dress and their hair is the exact same way? That kind of like, what do you call that? It's like up and back. I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah, a, it's a half up, half down. Um, Can you do that? I assume there'll be hair and makeup on, on the set, but... <laughs> I assume. <laughs> this is a Marvel movie? <laughs> now, would Kazzy's character be a presence throughout every film in the Arcthology quadrilogy? Oh, yeah. We'll have to put old makeup on you in, in I think two we, and three. I, I would yeah. be like a Thor situation, like that mom. 
You know, the she's, mom and Thor. Wait, yeah. Thor's mom. Thor's mom. Oh, Renee she's, Russo. Yeah. Yeah. She's a character. She goes away. You know, she comes back sometimes. And they'll be flashbacks. to give advice. Yep. <laughs> All have died, and like that's those are my big moments. Billy, <laughs> I can't yet finish that. Is that your don't audition? forget the music. Oh, this is, don't forget. Well, this is kind of interesting too. Whoa. Joel has said that neither of his parents had talked much about World War II, which were such dark years, of course. It was not until later that he learned more about his father's family. After Rosalind and Howard Joel divorced in 1957, can, can you cry on cue? Can you get really loud? Yeah. <laughs> Howard! <laughs> Howard Joel. So after they, they divorced in 1957, Howard returned to Europe. That's unusual for yeah. the, the kind of Jewish escape in the Holocaust. Yeah, we don't- but anyway. Rosalind Howard divorced in 1957. Howard returns to Europe as he had never liked the United States considering the people uneducated and materialistic. He settled in Vienna, Austria. Vienna, Billy Joel song, and later remarried. So Billy Joel has a half-brother, Alexander Joel, who was born to his father in Europe and became a classical conductor there. So Alexander Joel was the chief musical director of the Staatstheater Braunschweig from 2001 to 2014. So Billy Joel's brother is just straight up like an Austrian guy. This is amazing. Hey, Alex, how you doing, buddy? Well, well, Billy, you know, I'm the uh, chief musical director of this Staatstheater Braunschweig. Meet my wife, Naja. <laughs> this is my wife, Naja. Ooh. <laughs> if you told me that, like, hey, Kazi, like, do you want to come on Time Crisis? We're going to be talking only about Billy Joel <laughs> and do, like, a live improvised reading of, like, <laughs> this new biopic. <laughs> Might have passed. Look yeah. at Howard. He looks exactly like Billy. Whoa. That Look at that. That's a great photo, doesn't that he? Very European mustache. The Feels eyes. like Alex could kind of be the Thanos. <laughs> For his sure. Sword, don't you oh, think? yeah. No, he's the Hiddle, the... Oh, the... um, The Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, yeah, right. The Loki to yeah. Billy Joel's like Thor. Or Loki. Loki. Wait, so, Kazzy, can we officially say that you're attached as a... Rosalind? Yeah, but it might, like, just to sell it, it might be better to hold off telling them that until they pick it up. (laughs) We need a powerhouse for Howard, Billy Joel's father. A young Howard, could be any, but Adam Driver. (laughs) He's kind of a hot actor right now. He's got a very distinct look. I don't know. He doesn't really look. Can we get someone single so I can, like, form a, you know, (laughs) during this time? Okay. That'd be interesting. But, Cassie, I do have to say... We have to do what's if, best for the, the movie. Well, first understand. of all, the, pro- the project comes first. <laughs> but also, if you and whoever plays Howard fall in love and maybe get married and have kids, you do have to name your child Billy. <laughs> we would have to cha- name our child Billy. Or um, his original name that we haven't found <laughs> yet. Doesn't exist. Hopefully it's better. <laughs> Ezra, are you going to be in this film? I feel Billy, like... I'm going to be a co-writer. Executive producer. And, and executive producer. Behind the camera? No, I'm not going to direct. There's no reason you shouldn't be in this. It's a waste of your musical I'd be down to abilities. do a fun cameo. Fun cameo. You know, just like some- You're somebody, a cousin. Somebody Obviously, else. you're the other like guy a, one of Billy's cousins. Yeah, you'd be the other guy in Attila. <laughs> or like, you know, it would be fun to play another musician who was like working the clubs at the same time as Billy Joel. I'd do a cameo as Bruce. You know, whatever. I, I might have to- Yeah. I don't oh, know. Oh, Bruce. Don't, Bruce Springsteen. Cameo as Max Weinberg? Oh, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> You could be the tiny dancer. Nope, wrong one. <laughs> Our son, Billy Joel, David Driver, was born today. That is one <laughs> ugly kid. Like, I'm. <laughs> oh. Adam Driver's handsome. You guys would make a handsome couple. <laughs> no, that's, that's like a. That's really a scary. That's a scary kid. Just the combo. I'm sure he could make a beautiful kid. As could I, perhaps. Why not? What about David Bowie? As where you could be David Bowie, just single cameo once, like uh, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, just uh, like super coked out, like 70s David Bowie. I don't think Bowie and Joel did a lot of time together. Well, yeah, I'm just sure in the same room a few times. Yeah, just kind of come through the room and be a dick. Maybe if I if I I lose a lot of weight, I could do a Mick Jagger. (laughs) <laughs> what if I try? Well, you have to lose weight for that. If I, well, you you got yeah, right. to really seventies Mick. Mick Jagger, fam- now, yeah. he famously said, or it's at least attributed to him, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. No, that was Kate Moss. I've seen it attributed to both. Maybe he said it to Kate. It's a, actually, <laughs> you know, there's so Who many. Do you think there, said? There's so many made up quotes on the internet. It's very, but this is actually very possible that like Kate Moss is like. A 15-year-old model or something, and she's like at some like crazy party. And it's like Mick Jagger's there, 
And he's like, ah, oh, look at you, very skinny. And she's like, well, you know, you're quite skinny as well. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I always say? Nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. I don't eat a lot of food. Oh, interesting. He's like, you probably don't have to worry about that yet. And she's like, well, yeah, maybe when I'm older, I'll also not eat a lot of food. Yeah, all right. Yeah, but <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then later she she passed on that advice. It's like a secret society of of skinny English people. But yeah, I could come through. Well, Billy Joel, he, his thing has always been that. Yeah, okay, I don't look like a, a freaking rock star. You know, he's on the shorter side. He's you not should like be shooters. Eminem. No, but Eminem knows Elton John, not Billy. I'm sorry, Joel. I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> Maybe in this universe, so confusing. Billy Joel performed "Stan" with Eminem at the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> My tears gone cold. But Billy's like maybe in a dark period in the 70s and Billy's kind of like, oh man, this is before he meets Christy Brinkley. And he just kind of like, all right, I got all this money, but I still feel like this, you know, this schlub. guy, this schlub. I'm just a schlub, just an Italian schlub from Long Island. <laughs> I don't know, even know nobody, nobody's going to pay me any mind. And then just like right to add insult to injury. Then I waltz in. I've already been doing method acting. And I lost 40 pounds. And he's like, Oh, Mick, how you doing, man? I'm just like, Billy, look at look at you, man. Now, Billy's about to need a sub. <laughs> Big meatball grinder. <laughs> you know, Billy's really, de- okay, This is, I'm actually into this. Billy's really depressed after he got a, like a brutal review from Robert Criscow in the Village Voice. Tore him a new and one. <laughs> and he's just like, and he's, you know, and Billy was about to go to some like fancy dinner with all his new rich friends. And Billy's like, forget this. Whatever, all this money, and then I still got people, you know, just treating me like a schlub. I'm going to go where I belong, go to my favorite deli. And then he just, like, sits down, about to tuck into, like, you know, a meatball sub. And then the Rolling Stones walk by, and they're just kind of like, wait, they do, like, a double take. And McDonald's like, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Keith is standing outside, and then he comes, and he's like, Billy, you really about to eat, like, uh, you about to eat this meatball sub, man. I'm like, what are you doing, man? And Billy's like, Hey, hey, can you p- off, Mick? I'm kind of having a bad day. This is like, I'm Italian. This is my comfort food. It's the food. one thing I can enjoy yeah. here. <laughs> this is kind of like a, a comfort food for Italian people. Billy, man, first of all, he's not even Italian, man. Give it up, man. We all know you're Jewish, man. <laughs> and by the way, Billy, nothing tastes as good as skinny fish, all right? Well, realistically, Harry Styles should play Mick Jagger, actually. I think Jagger has a kid, too, who, who acts. He was on that show Vinyl. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> okay, that's perfect. I'm up on my weird HBO shows. And no yeah, I was like, is that the same thing as the deuce or different? It's part of the same cinematic universe, <laughs> I think. I'm actually really hype on on building out the BJU. We got Cassie David and Adam Driver attached as Howard. And Rosalind. And Rosalind. <laughs> Joel. You can play Christy Brinkley. Hmm. Was this an Oscar contender? Margot Robbie. <laughs> 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 